Michael Mike Rosie Mayone, also known as Policy Mike, Uncle Mike, and Mikey Rosa, was born in 1911. He was raised in the Harlem Bronx area of New York City and resided in the Bronx for many years. In the early 1930s, when he was in his early 20s, Mike Rosie moved up to Binghamton, New York, where he operated a large policy racket. By the early 1960s, Mayone relocated again to Bayside, Queens County, where he would reside for the rest of his life. He operated out of the Williamsbridge and Wakefield sections of the Bronx. Michael Mayone was an old-time veteran member of the Genovese family since at least the mid-1940s. He was identified during the 1963 Valachi hearings and on every government chart since then as an inducted soldier in the family. He served in the downtown Westside regime of Eboli and Giganti. His activities included policy numbers lottery, alcohol bootlegging, counterfeiting in U.S. currency and postal stamps, floating dice games, after-hours clubs, extortion, and business infiltration. His criminal arrest record starts in 1928 and includes arrests for armed robbery, policy, counterfeiting conspiracy, alcohol tax violations and conspiracy, forgery, and more. In 1928, Mike Rosie was arrested for burglary and received a two-year suspended term. In 1930, he was among four arrested on assault and robbery charges for a string of holdups in Manhattan and the Bronx. Mayone, who was 19 at the time, was apprehended as part of a gang that robbed drugstores, groceries, and other small businesses over several weeks' time. He served 18 months in jail. One of his co-defendants was future Bonanno Capo Vito Di Filippo. In 1933, he was arrested for excessive speeding in the Bronx. In 1934, Mayone, along with several other young hoodlums, were charged with robbery in the Bronx after assaulting and robbing a guy named Mike Adelman at his Harlem apartment. In 1936, he was extradited from Binghamton by New York City police and charged with a gun robbery. Mayone, who was 26 at the time, was arrested with two women accomplices working a variation of the old Badger game. The Badger game, by the way, is an extortion racket in which a man is lured by a woman into a compromising position and is then confronted with and blackmailed by the woman's accomplice. Also in 1936, he was listed as a top Binghamton racketeer and head of a policy operation in that city. Over a period of approximately six to seven years, he had been arrested numerous times for policy and lottery gambling. In fact, he garnered the nickname Policy Mike as a result of his notorious reputation in that area. In 1937, Mike was again charged with policy. He was extradited from New York City and returned up to Binghamton for not paying a woman $2,800 on a lottery ticket she hit while playing policy tickets with Mayone's policy ring at 500 to 1 odds. He later pled guilty to gambling conspiracy, got a suspended sentence, and was ordered to leave the city. He also faced bail jumping charges for having fled the city after making bail. In all, Mike had been arrested eight times in Binghamton, six times for possession of either lottery tickets or policy slips. In 1940, Mayone was one of 72 racketeers indicted for a huge multi-million dollar liquor tax fraud conspiracy for the operation of multiple alcohol stills over a number of years in the greater New York metropolitan area. Mike was specifically charged with the wholesale purchase and distribution of untaxed liquor to nightclubs, bars, and restaurants. Others indicted in the case included Tommy Milo, Louis Babe Milo, Antonio the Fox Caruso, and Anthony Navarra. They served 15 months in prison. In 1949, Mayone, who was 38 at the time, was indicted as the eastern head of a huge nationwide counterfeiting ring that forged U.S. currency as well as postal stamps. They were alleged by the Secret Service to have passed over $1 million in $10 and $20 notes in that past year alone. Mayone was also alleged to have been the guiding spirit in the passing of $500,000 in forged three-cent stamps. Authorities describe Mayone as a suave, well-dressed ex-convict and jukebox operator who was believed to have been the top dog on the East Coast. He was working with a top counterfeit syndicate out of the Chicago area that included some of the top racketeers in the nation. Under observation for a year by the Secret Service, 
Mayon was alleged to be the controlling head of a gang of 28 henchmen who flooded the New York and East Coast area with phony $10 and $20 bills in unprecedented quantities. Authorities said the counterfeit cash was masterful and almost perfect. Mayon would sell $100 in counterfeits for $20 or 20% of face value to passers who in turn would circulate the bills in commerce. He also sold these bills at wholesale at 8% to 15% in large quantities to other mob guys. He drew a three-year federal term for the stamps case and additionally had the separate counterfeit currency case as well. Later, several kids playing at a playground in the Bronx found two million bogus three-cent stamps dumped there by the counterfeit gang when the heat was on. In 1973, Mayon was among many mafiosi, including Joey Pagano, Tony the Sheik Carrillo, Joseph Angelo, and Neil Delacroach, investigated for their involvement in a stock fraud extortion case in the Southern District of New York. Frank Sinatra and his sidekick Jilly Rizzo also figured in this investigation. The fake stock was called Computer Fields Expressway, and a Joseph Joe Paris Guinera, who was an alleged relative of a Gambino member, bought $100,000 of the stock, reportedly with money fronted by Carlo Gambino, Sinatra, and Rizzo. Shortly after the investment, the stock's value quickly dropped from $12 to $0.75 cents per share nearly overnight. Clearly, a blatant fraud, and one against Gambino affiliates, no less. And that's when the Genovese and Gambino families had a beef involving many of the named hoods and the attempted strong-arm extortion to recoup the $100,000. Before it was all over, the FBI got wind of the events, which led to indictments against six of the hoodlums, Mayon and Pagano among them. The men were charged with interstate transportation and aid of racketeering and extortion. In his later years, Mike Rosie was well-traveled throughout the New York City area and a fixture in restaurants and nightclubs around the city. He pretty much knew everybody there was to know in the underworld, having been active for over 80 years as a mafioso and racket guy, an extraordinary feat. Mayon was also a mentor of sorts and friend to many an up-and-coming hoodlum, hence another nickname he garnered in later life based upon his demeanor, Uncle Mike. A very well-liked mafioso and friend to many, Mike died in 2008 at the ripe old age of 97. He fell backward down the stairs in his home after a night of clubbing and drinking on the town, believe it or not. If that unfortunate accident didn't happen, who knows how much longer he might have lived. Be sure to visit the Button Guys of the New York Mafia website at www.thenewyorkmafia.com for more stories about mobsters and mafia history. Thank you for watching. Until next time.